Thanks, as always, for that, Anthony. Well, let's now go back to the George Birch trial we have been discussing out of Wisconsin. And just before the break, we heard the beginning of prosecutors' uh, opening arguments, or a portion, I should say, of the uh, prosecutors' closing argument. Uh, and we heard her really give some disturbing details. She talked about the injuries uh, that the victim, Nicole Vander Hayden, uh, suffered. The injuries uh, because of sexual assault, prosec the prosecutor said. She said, uh, people have sexual intercourse all the time, but this was forceful. It was painful. And uh, the examination after the fact clearly showed that. So Chris Ann Hall, when the jurors hear these uh, disturbing details about the nature of the injury, the sensitive injury from sexual assault, how do you think that that uh, sways them? And this is uh, information that came out much earlier in the trial, but here we are bringing it all together as the prosecution seeks to hammer their case home. Well, the, that's why the prosecutor uses these uh, testimonies, these uh, medical information, because it is very, very strong uh, for the jurors to hear this. They are really emotionally controlled by this. And as the prosecutor said, you know, she's not here to testify, so we have to be able to hear her. Quite often a prosecutor will say, we can't hear the victim, but we can hear her body speak to us. The medical examiner will teach us. And it's the goal, as, as disturbing as it sounds, it would be the goal of the prosecutor to bring this to the jury as boldly and as plainly as can be spoken uh, as graphic as possible because you're actually looking for an emotional response. Yeah. Well, uh, again, in just uh, less than an hour, we will find out whether those tactics worked and whether the jury was convinced. But in the meantime now, let's hear a little bit of how defense attorneys for George Birch wrapped up their case. Gentlemen. Well, that is some of George Birch's uh, defense attorney's closing argument as he wraps up his case seeking to show jurors that George Birch did not kill Nicole Vanderheisen. Her boyfriend, Douglas Dietrich, did. Chris Ann Hall, former prosecutor, still with us via Skype from Jacksonville. And there's one uh, part of his argument which struck me, which struck me during the course of this entire trial, uh, including originally when we played it a few months back. And that is, he says, the facts show Doug Dietrich did it, that he had the motive. This is something that I got caught up on myself. What is George Birch's motive? There is evidence. There is DNA. Right. His DNA found on her sock. But it would seem that Doug Dietrich might have more motive to kill her. I mean, this is a guy she just met at the bar that night. What is his motive to kill this, this young woman? Well, I think you also have to look at something that you guys covered on Law and Crime was the fact that the babysitter even testified contrary to Doug's own testimony on the stand that uh, Doug testified I wasn't with her, but then the babysitter says, where, where is she? And he says, I don't know, she hit her head and walked home. So I, I, there's a lot of holes in this case. And I think the defense in the portion of the closing argument that I did see is, is handling this the way they should. Remember, we had the emotional response of the prosecutor. They want to touch the emotions of the juror. The defense needs to present their side of the story with uh, clear logic steps. And the logic is like just like you identified. What is the motive of, of this, of Birch? And we definitely know there is a motive for the boyfriend. And as you say, I mean, there are a lot of holes. And it is questionable, Doug Dietrich, while, yes, they had gotten in a fight and she, they, she had left in a huff the night before, uh, they still have an infant child together. He's alone with the infant and he doesn't think to call police till 4 47 p.m. the next day I mean so definitely a lot of questions there uh, as you say uh, we're gonna discuss this more uh, in a second uh, but it is time for a quick break we'll be right back after this George Birch's defense attorney there trying to convince jurors he did not do it that prosecutors have the wrong guy. So Chris Ann Hall, former prosecutor, still with me. In just a few moments, we are going to get to the verdict. We will see how the jury decided. But what do you think? How did Birch's defense attorney do? Did he make his case? You know, I think, I think that he's doing uh, a very good job with what he has. Uh, what a defense attorney did, has to do is find the holes and show the holes. And he's very, very clear at pointing out that the defendant doesn't have to prove anything, that everything is on the side of the prosecution on the side of the state. 
Uh, one thing that he will have a challenge with is the weight that people put on uh, scientific evidence like DNA and like the Fitbit thing. Uh, most people think that DNA evidence is, is always accurate, but it's not always accurate. And so these are the kind of things in our technological society and a society permeated with, with like I said, uh, these unrealistic police shows like NCIS that, that you have to deal with as an attorney. you got to show that the science really isn't as conclusive sometimes as, as we want it to be. So that what, maybe it wasn't Birch's DNA on her sock? No, no, I'm not saying that. I'm saying that um, the DNA, there are really only two things that the prosecution has to work with here is DNA and Fitbit. Right. They're not disputing that there's any DNA Yeah, evidence, exactly. And, and they're not know, disputing there, Birch was there that night. So, mm -hmm, um, you know, right. it makes sense that his DNA would be on her sock. Right. Quick break. When we come back, we will have the verdict. How did jurors decide in this case, George Birch, guilty or not? We'll be right back. Well, there you heard the prosecutor say that George Birch's story is the only thing that connects Doug Dietry to this crime. He's filling in holes here, accusing George Birch of being a liar and giving his account that Doug Dietry is the one that killed Nicole Vander Hayden. Uh, before we play this verdict, Chris Ann, what do you think? What will jurors decide? You know, it really is hard to tell because this is uh, not a clear cut case. This is a case built on emotion and on limited facts. It's really kind of a he said, she said case substantiated by uh, one side or the other, depending on how you interpret the evidence that you have. And so it's really going to be hard to tell. I would suspect if they have chosen a, a particularly emotional jury uh, through Von Dyer, you're going to get a conviction. If you have uh, chosen a, a jury that seems to be more logically based, then it could be a not guilty because I, I personally feel like maybe the prosecution hasn't exceeded that burden of beyond a reasonable doubt in this case. Yeah, I mean, I, I agree with you. There are a lot of holes in this case, and it is a good point about the jury. So uh, here we are. We have reached the verdict. Let's go ahead and see how the jury decided. Emotional reactions in the courtroom there from Nicole Vander Hayden's family members as the jury delivered its guilty verdict, George Birch, guilty of murdering Nicole Vander Hayden. I will tell you that uh, back in May, the judge sentenced George Birch to life without parole in prison. Uh, he uh, has already filed an appeal. So uh, Chris Ann Hall, still with us here uh, via Skype, former prosecutor. Um, were you surprised? You know, as we, you and I just said, there were some holes here. We maybe were not totally convinced because of things like motive, because, uh, you know, ha how much can we tell from DNA evidence? So were you surprised that they delivered a guilty verdict? You know, I wasn't surprised. Uh, like I said, I think it could have gone either way, especially in these kind of cases. But we also see uh, that jurors are highly affected by emotional testimonies and emotional pieces of evidence. And so what we have is, is a case that was really just hard won on emotion. And it's no surprise to me that there were the emotional responses in the audience like they were either, because this was a violent case. We can only pray that justice is, has served right and the right person has been convicted of this crime. Yeah, absolutely. And again, you know, he has appealed. We'll see what happened. But George Birch sentenced uh, to life in prison without the possibility of parole for murdering Nicole Vander Hayden. Well, we are going to take a quick break, but when we come back, we're going to go back to the Shana Huber's case. You remember our own Erin Keller is live for us in Kentucky following all the developments of this case. We're going to hear a little bit more uh, from opening arguments this morning, and Chris Ann and I are also going to discuss some other interesting aspects of this case, including some statements that Shana Huber's herself has made. So stick around. We will be right back after this break with more on Shana Huber's. Well, the prosecutor there saying, don't take our word for it, take Shana Hubert's word for it. Everything she said, all these things she wishes she could unsay. The prosecution here, their theory is, look, Shana Hubert's felt if she couldn't have Ryan Post and her boyfriend, then no one could. So she shot him six times. 
Def De Sh Shana Hubers and her attorney say this was in self-defense. This is a retrial. Um, I, I, I want to just briefly talk, Chris Ann Hall, about some comments uh, because Shana Hubers has talked a lot. She talked when she was arrested. She gave multiple interviews. Uh, we know she she has said a lot, and that perhaps has gotten her in trouble. In her most recent interview before this second trial uh, began, she did an interview with the local TV station, and they talked about the Me Too movement. Interestingly, she was asked whether she thought in this current climate, how that would sort of factor in to jurors' perception of her claims that she was the victim of domestic abuse. And she said, I think the Me Too movement, I think it could go either way. I think it could help. I think it could hinder because some people could see it as crying wolf, that there's all these girls that feel the same way about men. But she added, uh, you know, she'd become a different, more mature person and, and, and maybe it could help her. W what do you think about those comments? You know, I think that in the legal system, uh, there has been an issue of uh, domestic violence that uh, is somehow sometimes out of play when it comes to uh, the women and the men. As a prosecutor, you 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 could see on a daily basis this what she said about the crying of wolf. A lot of people realize that these allegations of domestic violence are often used as a tool against the man to keep him in a relationship. So the idea that she recognizes that, hey, it could hurt me or it could help me, it shows us that, that she understands that there's a serious situation here, which m people in society notice, is that uh, there are women out there who will use the legal system to get what they want. And, uh, you know, maybe that's what she's hoping for. Yeah, well, uh, it will certainly be interesting to see as this trial gets underway. Let's go ahead now and listen to a little bit more of how the defense kicked their case off. All right, that was some more of Shana Huber's defense attorney's opening statement. Uh, Chris Ann Hall, before we say goodbye for the day, uh, your final thoughts on how this retrial will play out and whether Shana Huber's has a chance of uh, getting acquitted this time around. You know, I, the defense has a real issue here. They can play up the fact that, that uh, and provide evidence that she was a, a battered girlfriend, that she had battered spouse syndrome, but they can, they're going to really, really have a hard time getting over the fact that maybe she shot once, but then she thought and shot again. And that's that moment where she stopped and she thought and she shot him five more times. That's going to be the point that makes her uh, guilty. One quick question before we go. You know, we've been saying we are not live streaming this, streaming this. The judge will not allow it. He's being really strict on how much of this trial can be broadcast. He's saying just snippets of it can be broadcast. Is that common? I mean, he's not saying no cameras in the courtroom. He's just saying no live streaming and it can only show little parts. He's not even saying which parts. You know, sometimes when the testimony may be um, a graphic or... Uh, the testimony may be violent or the pictures may be violent. The judge would like to have an opportunity to yeah. to keep that sign of stuff from public view and, yeah. and decide what is appropriate or not. Chrisanne, we have to leave it there. Thank you so much for being with us. Thanks to all of our viewers. We'll see you back here tomorrow morning on Law and Crime. Have a great day.